for section 3.3, which is called solving quadratic equations by factoring. So the whole reason we've been factoring in section 3.1 and 3.2 is to get ready for this section. And we will talk about what a quadratic equation is. But first, what I want to do is um, just do this question here. Um, so it says, guess and test integer values of x to solve this equation. Um, so this is called an equation because it has an equal sign. And when we, when we are asked to solve an equation and we have some variables there like x in this example, what we're trying to do is to find values of x um, to make that equation true. So what values of x can I plug in here and have this left-hand side equal zero? Okay, um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just show you how to solve it, um, just kind of as a preview. Um, what we wanna do is solve by factoring today. So first step is always factor, once you get your equation in the right format. Um, so we wanna factor, and this is a simpler factoring equation because um, it doesn't have, it just has a one as the leading coefficient. So we just ask ourselves, okay, what are two numbers that have a product of 14 and a sum, oops, like that, sum of negative five. If you need a review on factoring, please go back and do sections 3.1 and 3.2. Um, this section won't be doable if you don't know how to factor. Um, okay, and so the two numbers there would be negative seven and positive two. So our equation would look like this, uh, x minus seven, x plus two, and see how it says equals zero, so it's still gonna be equal to zero. So we wanna find the x values, what can x be to make this true? Um, if you want, so these are being multiplied together, these brackets. So if you want something to be zero and you're multiplying, you need at least one of the two things you're multiplying to equal zero. So either x minus seven should be equal to zero, because then we'll have zero times something is zero, or x plus two should be zero. And we can just solve these little mini equations. I'm going to move the 7 to the other side. x equals 7. Or we can move the 2 to the other side, minus 2, minus 2. x equals negative 2. So we actually have two different possible answers. In equations you've seen before in previous math classes, you probably only saw one answer. So now we have two possible answers. And let's just verify that these are true. Um, so we are going to plug in, I'll do the x equals 7 one here. I'll plug it into the factored form and then I'll plug it into the original. So if I plug it into the factored form here, you'll see I have 7 minus 7 and then 7 plus 2. Well, if 7 minus 7 is 0, so of course 0 times anything is going to be 0. That's true. Um, and then we'll do this one, uh, negative 2 minus 7, negative 2 plus Two, and so we'll have negative nine times zero equals zero. Yeah, it's true. Anytime you multiply things by zero, you get zero. Um, you can also check these in the original equation and make sure they're true. Um, let's just do it for seven. So we'd have seven squared minus five times seven. I forget what the other number was, minus 14. So this would be 49 minus 35. Minus 14 equals zero. Yes, that's true. 49 minus 35 minus 14 equals zero. So the equation makes sense. Um, you could try it again for negative two as well to make sure those are true. But today, for most questions, we're actually going to have two solutions that work. Um, and we're going to solve in this way by factoring and setting our equation to zero. Okay, so let's go over a couple of key terms first before we do some more complicated examples. So on the next page here, they explain what a quadratic equation even is. So we need to know this word. For the rest of this chapter, we are gonna be solving these types of equations called quadratic equations. And a quadratic equation is any equation that can be written like this. So ax squared, important that it has the x squared, plus bx plus c equals zero. And a, b, and c can be any type of number. Um, and that's it, that's a quadratic equation. Um, what we want to do when we're solving by factory is use something called, and it's highlighted here, 
the zero product property. So when you can factor your equation, and it can be written like this, then one of the factors is going to be zero. Either this one equals zero or this one equals zero. Because when you're trying to multiply two things and make zero, one of those two things must be zero. And that's how we're going to solve today. So we're going to set our equation to zero, factor, and then one of the two factors has to be zero. Um, so that's the whole idea. The only kind of tricky parts are going to be like there's different sort of types of factoring we have to remember, but that's the key idea. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this first equation, 1a here. Um, so first step is always make sure it's set, the equation is set to zero uh, because we want to use this zero product property. In this first question, A, it is already set to zero. Um, so we are going to skip that one because it's a little bit easier. If you want to try that one on your own, you can. I'm going to go straight ahead to B and try the harder one. Um, so for this question for B, see how it's not set to zero? So we can't use the zero sum property here right away. So what we have to do here, and I'm going to use the space above. So this is check your understanding. 1B. So I'm just going to copy it from my book here. 3x plus 1 times x minus 6 equals 22. Now it's not set to zero. So the first step is if it's not set to zero, you want to expand and move all the terms over and set it to zero. So set equation to zero. So we're going to FOIL this out. So we'll have 3x squared negative 18x plus 1x minus 6 equals 22. And to set it to zero, all we have to do is subtract 22 from both sides. Um, that's going to get rid of the 22 on the right-hand side, and we'll just be left with zero. And in algebra, when you do something to one side of an equal sign, you have to do the same thing to the other to keep it balanced. So we'll have 3x squared minus, okay, so I can collect these like terms here. So that would be minus 17x and minus 28 equals zero. Okay, so um, this is a factoring question now. I can just kind of guess and check if I want. I can also solve by um, uh, decomposition. Uh, I will just factor it because I'm going to assume in this lesson that you know how to factor. So I'm just going to write the factors down. Um, and if you need more practice with factoring, um, you can go back and um, practice that on your own. So if you do factor this properly, you'll have 3x and x, and then you'll have um, minus 7 and plus 4. I'm just going to double check that works. Minus 21. Plus 4. Yep, that works. Perfect. Okay. So we factored. And then um, now we're just going to either set. So we have two things here that must equal 0. So either... This blue part has to equal zero, or this green part has to equal zero. So I'm going to do a little side, side here for each of those, and we're going to solve them. So either 3x plus 4 equals zero, or x minus 7 equals zero. And we just use algebra to solve. So for this one, we subtract 4, and then we'll have 3x equals negative 4, and we divide by 3. Just as a reminder, you're always doing the opposite operation when you're solving. So x would be negative 4 over 3 right here. Um, for this one, it's a little bit easier. We just simply add 7 to both sides. And so we'll have x equals 7. Now, you can and you should plug these back into the original equation that's written down here. Um, and make sure those equal each other, but and just for time here, we won't. But um, you should always verify your answers, especially on a test, just to make sure you didn't make any silly mistakes. Okay, so that's the first example. Now we're just going to do um, another one where the situation is like slightly different. Um, and again, you can try A on your own if you want. The answer is down below. Okay, so let's do number two. Um, I'm going to do B. If you want to do A on your own, you may. I'll do B down here, because this one's a little bit different. So we have 5x squared equals negative 20x. 
Um, there is no constant term in this one. And remember the first step is always to set your equation to zero so you can use that zero sum property. So I'm just gonna move all the terms to one side. Um, so I'm gonna add 20X here and add 20X here. That cancels it out over here. So I'll have 5X squared plus 20X equals zero. Now this actually um, it has no constant term. And the, remember the first step, no matter what you're doing when you're factoring, is always factor out anything in common. So both of these terms can be divided by five. And both of these terms actually have an X. So I'm going to pull those out. And then I'll just simply have X, 5X squared divided by 5X is just X. And then 20X divided by 5X would be four. And actually I factored it just simply by pulling out a constant term. So it's kind of an easier example. Um, and then remember for our zero sum property, we will either want 5X to be zero or we want X plus four to be zero. So I'll make two different little equations here. Either 5X is gonna equal zero or X plus four is gonna equal zero. For this one, we divide by five and we get X equals zero. Zero divided by five is zero anyways. Um, and this one, we're going to subtract four. X equals negative four. So you're usually going to have two different answers. Um, it does say to verify, so we can verify on the side here. If you don't have space, you can always do it above. We want to take the original equation when you verify because any steps that are after that, you could have made a mistake. So you always want to verify with the original. So let's plug in the zero first. Five times zero squared equals negative 20 times zero. Five times zero squared would be zero. Negative 20 times zero would be zero. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay, let's verify our other answer. Five times negative four squared is the same as negative 20 times negative four. Um, the left-hand side would be 5 times 16, and the right-hand side would be 80. 20 times 4 is 80. Yeah, 5 times 16 is 80 as well. So 80 equals 80. Our solutions work. Um, so verifying, you want to plug back your x values that you found, put them back into the original equation, and make sure the equation makes sense. The left-hand and the right-hand side are equal to each other. Okay. Um, let's go finally to our last example here. And this one involves the square root. And from the last um, chapter, we learned that whenever you have an equation with square roots, we have to be careful of extraneous roots. And so we'll have to verify our solution for sure and double check that there are no extraneous roots. Okay, um, this does not look like a quadratic equation, does it? It has a square root in it. It doesn't have any x squared terms. What we wanna do, is isolate that um, radical and move the four to the other side. And we're gonna turn this into a quadratic equation. But this step here, actually I don't have brackets yet. So to get rid of a square root, the opposite of square rooting something is to square something. Um, we had equations similar to this in our last chapter, but they didn't have any x's on the right-hand side here. So the square cancels the square root, and I'll just have 6 minus x. And on this side, I have x minus 4 squared. Just as an aside, I'm going to FOIL that out. x minus 4 squared is the same as x minus 4 times x minus 4. And that would be x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16. Uh, so that would be x squared minus 8x plus 16. So I'm going to write that over here, x squared minus 8x plus 16. Okay, now this is a quadratic equation, so I'm going to solve it by factoring. Before we solve it by factoring, we have to set one side equals zero. Um, so we're going to move uh, these other terms here to the right-hand side. So because we have minus x, we're going to add 1x. And because we have positive six, we'll subtract six from both sides, okay? You always wanna move things to the side where the x squared term is positive. So since I already have a coefficient of positive one on the right-hand side, I'm moving everything to the right. So these end up getting canceled out. And I'll have x squared minus seven x 
plus 10. And now we're going to factor this. Two things that multiply to positive 10 and add to negative 7. That would be um, negative 5 and negative 2. And then we can use our zero sum property. Either x minus 5 is going to be 0 or x minus 2 is going to be 0. Let's do the two little equations here. Either x minus 5 is going to equal 0 or x minus 2 is going to equal 0. And then we want to add 5 to both sides. So we'll get x equals 5 or add 2 to both sides here x equals 2. So I don't know necessarily, though, that those are both a correct answer. We need to check for extraneous roots because, remember, the original equation had um, a square root in it. So we can have extraneous roots here. So let's double check. Let's verify. If you don't have space, you can always verify um, up above. But I will verify down here. So um, verify. I'll do x equals 5 first. So I'm going to plug into the original equation 6 minus 5 plus 4 equals 5. Let's double check. Um, that would be square root of 1 plus 4 equals 5. Square root of 1 is 1. Yeah, that works. Okay, so that is a answer. Let's check 2. So we'll have square root of 2, 6 minus 2, is that right? Yeah. 6 minus 2 plus 4 equals 2. This will be square root of 4 plus 4 equals 2. So this will be 2 plus 4 equals 2. Oh, that doesn't work. Nope. So this one is an extraneous root. So only x equals 5 is the right answer, and you can see that's the answer that's shown down there below as well. Okay, um, so those are the kind of different scenarios you'll see here. The main idea is you want to get it so that it looks like a quadratic equation with a 0 on one side, factor it, and use that 0 product property. Um, there is one more word problem, and if you want to go through the example and try that on your own, you can, but I'm going to stop the lesson here.